Jesus Christ, he was a protester. He wanted people yeah. to fill their hearts with love. He's, he's like, right. and, and I think that we, with, with all these organized religions out there, that we forget that that's what God wants us to do is to love each other. You know, and I think sometimes we, we get confused over the definition of love. Love is a joining yes. and it has nothing to do with we, uh, we, we, so many people think that, oh, what they put a, a romance to it uh, or a sexuality to it or something like that is like, and it's not about that. Love is about, it's that energy that, that binds us all together. You know, yes. yeah. And when we you know, when we I, open our hearts up to that, it's like, man. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. Today we're speaking with Michael Cloggs. He is the creator, owner, host of Depictions Media. He used to be an analytical chemist and he turned into this media guru. So Michael, would you introduce yourself and let people know just a little more about you, please? Well, um, basically, I created Depictions Media because there's a lot of mass media out there that just doesn't tell the truth, you know, they, and people don't don't realize what they don't know. And they got to know. It, that's the whole point. We have to know what we don't know or else we can't ask the right questions. We can't um, when we need to march, we can't march for the right things. And we need, and we can't do the right things in our community unless we really know what the issue is and what caused the issue. Now, as as you mentioned, I used to be an analytical chemist, and I was one in a hundred people that in the world that could actually do a specific test with a mass spectrometer. And hey, I, I was like, hey, I'm on top of the world. I, I, it's like I got audited by um, some pretty big um, uh, auditing groups that are, that are global. Um, uh, I think it was uh, they were called Price Waterhouse Cooper, and they they said that hey, I was one of the leading analytical chemists out there because my results were consistent. If I said it, the result was a result that by this audit proof that hey he he's on the money and i've had my resume uh been looked at by nasa and by cern which hey in the in the world of science that's that that means a lot to the average person it may not mean much of anything but there were some things out there and one of the big things that, that i ran into was um, one of my lab partners had worked for a company that um, introduced a sweetener product. I'm not going to mention names, but sweeteners we all know are big business. And um, one sweetener was said to have this huge capacity to make us unhealthy. So another sweetener was introduced and as it turned out the, that that particular sweetener had just as equal capacity 
to make us unhealthy as the first one that they yanked off the market. And that there was things behind the scenes, payoffs and and uh, in in schemes that we never hear about in in the public that pushed one product over the other. One company was in financial trouble and the other company said, hey, if you push push it out there and they get a little bit on the back end, why not? You know, so these are the things that happen in business that produce products that we never even hear about. And I think that people need to hear about them. And so that was what helped push along the idea of, of depictions media. The other thing was um, the United States, Canada, and Great Britain marched into the Middle East, caused a war, yanked a person out of power, all because they wanted more oil. Well, that's not right. And some of some of my, my my close friends that I grew up with, they were in some of the top the uh, combat units in the United States, and they were sent to war over a couple drops of oil. They didn't train for that. They trained because they believed in democracy and they believed in equality. And that's what they wanted to go to war over, not a, an oil patch. So, you know, I, I woke up to this. And that's the whole point is I finally woke up. And my mission now is to get others to wake up. It's like, it's, this isn't about being angry about... um about things. This is about, hey, we need to wake up and we need to take control of our lives. So, yeah, Michael, that's very media. interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it's very interesting that you say that. It's not about being angry. It's about making it right, making things happen in the best suitable manner that we can. That is really the scientific model, per se. And mm. really, it's the logical approach. And many of us, we get that consumerism bug and we forget about what's precious instead of what we need yeah. or our need for greed and the next biggest iPhone or the bling that basically when you drop it, it's toast anyway. See, so a lot of that that we hunger for. It's limited in its capacity in many ways, especially longevity. When we talk about electronics, we're talking, you know, two, three months now, and that's out of date. They've got something new. Well, Being able to control that, that's very unique in people. And that's where people like you kind of set back they analyze it and they say, this isn't right. So how can I step in and make it better? When I started, I got angry and I was just mad because everything happened to me at once. And that wake up that you talked about, it, it was hard for me. So developing from that anger to getting into what matters the most and how to push your message. What is that like for you? And how should people actually spread their message in an appropriate way without that anger attached to the message? Well, first we got to get past the anger because, um, because trust me, uh, um, I, I, I was angry, especially, Especially when, when, when my friends were being sent overseas to go fight a war over some oil, it's like, yeah, I, I was, I was angry. It's like, and I had to get over that. Um, luckily, I, I, I had a couple great people sit me down and and say, um, hey, the the anger is just going to have have the have these things come 
to have these these powers to be these corporate entities just come chase you down and they're going to stuff you in jail or something like that and and you'll never get heard of again it's like i had a couple of great people actually sit me down and tell me that it's like so one get through the anger and once you get past the anger and you and you truly do wake up Tell everybody else about how you got angry and woke up. And you, you on on the episode that we recorded uh, on Depictions Media, you, you said you you got angry and then you woke up, right? It's part of your story, right. uh, you know. And by the way, by the way, before you carry on, Michael, that was one of the better episodes I've ever done because it was filled with so much truthful fact. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. Oh, no, that's OK. And thank you for for saying that, that we, we are spreading truth. Um, So get through the anger and then start looking for the truth because it'll start to reveal itself. And hey, d- you know what? Instead of spending the money for for a new iPhone, why don't you take that same thousand dollars that because i just bought a new one because i bought a new one because because apple said it couldn't be fixed it w- they wouldn't put a new battery in it uh, so i had to go i had to buy that's another a trap, one and isn't I, it? I, I, the, the, yeah and, and and that's how i know that it costs about a thousand dollars for a new iphone um it, it, it take it Take your family or spend that thousand dollars and take your family on on a camping trip. You know, there's some beautiful sites in 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 our world, and um, Oregon, you because you're in Oregon, you know, has has some really the really cool places to to go visit along the beaches and everything. It's like uh, British Columbia where I am. It's like, man, we go. Go go sit sit on the beach and, and with with your family have a picnic lunch or or, or just say a picnic dinner and watch the sunset. Oh it's like, yeah, it's amazing. You, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do something like that. You know, it's like it doesn't it one it doesn't cost a thousand dollars to to go sit sit on the beach unless you have to travel to it. You know, it's like so. So you travel to it. It's like it's worth right. worth the the expense that way, because we're going to create memories for our family that way. That's right. And right. those memories are way more precious than the the iPhone, the Apple computer. I don't mean to just pick on Apple, but if you if you actually were to sit in my studio, as like I have. <laughs> I have all Apple stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not just picking on Apple. <laughs> I, but with that being said, some of the ideals of, of Steve Jobs were ab- around. He created the products he did because he wanted people to be able to create and and save their memories as well. Some of why he created what he did. He didn't create create Apple just on consumerism, and while we're while we're getting to consumerism, um, we we have this whole thing. And as uh, as we're recording this, um, Top Twenty Seven just ended, and if. For those that, that need that need a little more information, COP27 is about climate change. It is the UN's um, platform for bringing a bunch of countries together to talk about climate change. So they it just ended, and they didn't didn't slap at the oil industry as as hard as they as people thought. They didn't um, come to conclusions that, oh, gee, um, we should make the these oil companies pay their fair share to clean up their mess. And so a lot of that didn't didn't actually happen. But as we are the people, why don't we just simply put 
if we cut back on our commercialism, the U.S. and Canada, right? Two of the biggest consumer countries in the world. If we were just to simply cut back 10% on, on the amount of products that we buy, it would have a drastic effect in Asia where these products are manufactured. It would slow production down. I mean, it, yeah, that's incredible. It, it, with, you know, it, a lot of people don't recognize the power of oil. You know, that that oil, every drop of it has a purpose, a use. And when they refine that and it goes through that refinery process, that leftover sludge stuff, well, they use that and we yeah. we make plastics and things like that out of it mm -hmm. but the the carbon footprint of that it, it can have devastating effects and we don't think beyond the dollar really when we get into things like that we don't recognize well maybe we should think about how we're going to dispose of the waste a little better or is there a better way to dispose of what we have left? And we find a lot of rubber, a lot of plastic, a lot of waste that really is unneeded in our world. When we think about it, that it, it's overwhelming and we pollute our world by this toxic wasteland in the oceans and I don't know about you, but I can drive up into the forest here and I see where people just dump their waste. Uh, and, know. you know, there's there's no sense in this. If, if that's the case, maybe we should have that ac access for those individuals that can't afford it. So that is not happening in our world. So there's always these things that people don't think the consequence the after the buck yeah. what's it going to do to our world and you concentrate on that a lot there's meaning to that yeah and what got you started into being so aware of environmental issues and changing how we consume well it was uh, a lot. A lot of it was was changing my own values. You know, there was some uh, at one point. Uh, it's like um, I started telling this story because um, I, I it, when I said I was at the top of my game as an analytical chemist, I had a Ram twenty five hundred with. The, the Viper V10 engine and I was like it's it's full of muscle and and and, and I'm racing around with 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 with, the, with this truck right and um some things happened and I spoke out against um the the war in Iraq and a lot of things in the community had changed and didn't go exactly the way I thought they should and I found myself being divorced and having my truck repoed and and my uh, my my house at the, at the time um, you know I had like twenty five hundred square feet hey we're on top of the world sort of thing right and um, it was foreclosed on. And my ex-wife filing all these injunctions and things against me. And I'm like, I'm like looking around. And it's like it, it the only thing left was was me. Well, <laughs> it's yeah. like, hey, if you don't think that, that makes that having that happen will won't make you angry. Oh yeah, you're yeah. angry. <laughs> you're angry, and so I had all that, and I and I was like, well, I'm sitting down with 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 some of the people that that were that that were really my friends in that political world, and they said, if you keep going like this, they're going to keep coming at you, and they're going to stuff you 
stuff you in 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 the jail and and they'll lose you and and you'll be forgotten about forever. It's like, what are you gonna do? I was like, and with that, um, I made some moves and I realized that there was enlightenment out there and that I don't have to be angry about it. I don't have to to march and and but writing letters and in this day and age sending emails it becomes important but sending it in in the way that you are presenting ideas and asking questions as opposed to screaming about how nasty the they are gets gets you further and then I had this opportunity to 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 cause awareness for for a group of 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 people that they were disabled because of chronic pain, and I got got to walk, um, somewhere between I f- I forget somewhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred kilometers across oh. our continent, and it's beautiful out there. <laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, stunning, beautiful. It's like, and you know, some of those those crazy fears. Now, now, don't. I'm a bit of a nutcase, so I'm going. I'm going to say that. Say, I got to play with play with 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 a grizzly bear. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm a lucky bastard, and I'm living to tell <laughs> talk about it, but. But it was like, but it was, and then I realized that I had changed, something inside of me had changed. Something had changed, and I was open to what is happening in our universe in a loving way. It doesn't change the fact that, yes, we're still going to broadcast about um, what the government isn't doing for us. But we're also going to present those ideas of what the government could, could could be doing for us and how we can we can help make it better so that we're asking for things and not saying we don't want things instead of I don't I don't do a lot of events with people that are against something. What do you I asked him, I said, why don't we change it around so that we are for something? And it's like. We are for human rights. We're not against bigotry. It's like when, we're, when you say you're for human rights, it means it means that you're standing, you're taking a stance that people can say, "Hey, I can join in on that." You know, that's right. So, so a, a lot of that it, it changed. It it, it took a, a total mindset change away from anger. And 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 hate to love and trust. Trust that 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 your next door neighbor is gonna is gonna be happy and 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 a good person, you know. Even though he may look different than you, trust yeah. in that. That's right. Yeah, I know, Ed. You you had the same some of the same transformations, right? That's right. You know, anger gets you nowhere, but more angry and we we have to remember what we feed ourselves we're inclined to do so that that transition it, it really takes that awareness the waking up like you stated earlier and for many of us that entails hitting rock bottom or the basement of rock bottom you know, not even knowing if there is a way out. Those struggles are real. And identifying the power within yourself without the need of people telling you, oh, good job. Uh, you're, you're doing such a good job. Because most of the time, you know this as well, Michael, we're not patted on the back. We're in a competition zone in many ways. That's mm-hmm. what the mind does to us. And if we can turn that off 
and realize we're not in a competition. We're here to help one another grow, right. exceed. And, and if we help each other exceed who they are right now, when they hit the top, maybe they'll reach down and say, hey, come on up here. I need you up here because you got me here. You know, and and that's the world I want to live in. So yeah. recognizing that shift in mindset is up to you. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So if you're around those individuals that are grumpy and telling you you can't do it and you won't do it and why you shouldn't do it, mm -hmm. maybe you should shift and locate yourself to those people telling you that's a good idea how can you do this uh, what steps can you take to make it easier for you to get there these are the steps that i aspire to give out i mean i want to teach people how i learned so they don't have to get knocked down seven eight ten times if we oh. can create a world like that, imagine the possibilities. What what could we yeah, do? Exactly. I, I I love when 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 I have somebody come on the show and and they're telling a story about how they offered a handout to lift somebody up. You know, it's a That's right. You know, and. I found myself when I when I changed changed that, I stop I stopped hearing from from these people who wanted to spread the hate <laughs> messages. They they stopped showing up on my doorstep. That's a good I only point. Have these people that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that no, I want to be able to broadcast on your show. I want can I come on your show and talk about how I help people come up, how I help them help them lift lift up, you know. There's no better power than that. You know, people get power hungry, but when you find the power in what you just said, eh, you, you've got the world in your hand. Yeah. And, and you can't you can't get any better than that. Well, when um one of my 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 favorite um episodes um and this was actually on radio so i don't i don't actually have this recorded on our podcast system but um i do i have i have brought karen tyrell she is a dementia expert and when i first had her on our show on radio uh which is which the the episode wound up being owned by the radio station and not by me so i don't have it but there was a um some of our team members had just lost their mother to dementia and they were trying to understand some of the things that happened and she started yeah. walking them through a process about of uh, about how things were happening with with her mother as 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 they passed away they were in tears not in tears because they 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 were angry they were in tears because their heart yeah. filled up with with love again and they realized that that their mother was was going through this thing that she yes she was slowly being taken from them but they realized all the precious moments even through the the process of dementia taking her and it was an amazing thing i actually um one of the uh, one of the texts was going was going to cut the session and and go to commercial, and I I said no, no, we're not going to commercial on this one. It was like let it play, let it let, let this yeah. play out. It's like the station manager may have been tapping on the glass or whatever, but I said no, this <laughs> is good radio. People need need to hear this one. I said yeah. let it play out. We can't interrupt this, you know. Um, and more and more people started showing up. It's like um, Dead America showed up on, on my doorstep, <laughs> yeah. as well as I yeah. showed up on your yeah. doorstep. It's like it, That's it, right. it's like it didn't seem. I was like Dead America. What the heck is that about? And I listened to an episode, and it was like <laughs> it's like he's 
he's lifting people up. That's this right. guy Ed, he it's like I need need to talk to him, you know. Yeah, and and you know I'll always remember those that lifted me up because yeah. they are so empowering instead of imprisoning, and that we have to get through our heads very quickly. You know, dealing with dementia, uh, my stepfather, he he was in Idaho, in the Elks Hospital in Boise. And my sister and my niece, they just kind of let him go because he wanted to go. And he had dementia. Well, he ended up somehow in Boise, Idaho, and they called me. And I said, well, all right. Somehow I'm going to get there and get Joe and get him back. And it's amazing how things line up when you need them to. But hmm. the the thing is, I worked with him and I was going through my own turmoils at the time also. And some of those things that happened during his decline was devastating because I did not understand what dementia was going to do to not only him, but the family and, you know, but just outburst of tears and cry for no reason. And you think that you've done something, you know, there's these mixed emotions that happen and then they'll start laughing at you at the wrong time and it sends this signal why are you laughing at me well they can't help it they're, they're they don't even realize they're doing it and those stages of dementia is so confusing for the individuals caring for the individual if you're not a steep to it you you are just kind of thrown into it and you go what the heck is this why are you doing this it, i think that's one of the most important topics that people need to discuss is this dementia and how the stages of dementia will play out because it's confusing so much so i really thank you for putting that message out because yeah. It's like cancer. At some point, you're probably going to deal with somebody with dementia. Yes. Um, we have a, a neighbor around the corner from us, a wonderful couple. Um, and the, the husband is trying, is, he's doing his best. And um, I can't contacted my friend Karen and, and she told me to, told me she says do what to sit down and work with him on so that he could call the right people um to get help now he's he he's he stopped me the other day and he he said that that they're going to have it's going to still going to take a couple weeks but but he's on the schedule so that a respite person can come and just give him a break you know and it's yeah. an amazing it, it, their dementia story is also a love story because they grew up in this little town in uh, between France, Belgium, and, and Germany. Um, that they, they watched the 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 Nazis walk through and wow. and attack <laughs> France. You know, uh, it it's um, and. They they uh, they moved here to to North America and um, as part of their their love story, and in its ending with him bathing her and feeding her and doing it, it, that love is is just continued and and sometimes she she looks at him and and she doesn't know where 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 she is. And she yeah. can't speak anything more than than French. And then there's other times that she understands you in English, you know. 
and interesting. It's, it's a, an amazing. It, it, I sat down in their kitchen and and as we're as I was giving him the information that he needed to get help, and he started telling me more and more of these stories. You know, I was like, they've had amazing lives, and yeah. it'd be good just to bring them some dignity. You know, I was like, yeah. So, so but that's what that's what podcasting is supposed to be about: building community. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know? And and you know what what does those stories do for you Michael and how do they help you approach your everyday? Well, just the fact that in this particular case the lady's telling me that he's going to get the help is like it means that the connections are working. You know, I had a, a conversation uh about a friend um uh, we were sitting at coffee and and she starts telling me about the power of one that we're all connected and when we accept that power of one we can do it's like we can we can just about move mountains but That's we're right. not well we're, but the, the the here's the point is we're going to leave the mountain where it is so others can enjoy it even That's though right. we may have the power to move it. <laughs> I'm glad you made that point, Michael. <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. Exactly. That's, that's a good point to make. <laughs> the really so, good point. You know, one of the things you say is everyone has a voice. I, I love that mantra. Why? Does everybody have a voice? Oh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go God on that one on, on you. God gave us a voice. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's right. It, you know, he gave he gave us a voice. He gave us the ability to speak out. Um, I'm, I'm even going to go back to to Jesus Christ. It's like Jesus Christ. Uh, I know that organized religion, they they came with this fire and brimstone thing, and I don't exactly get along with it because God put love as the main energy of what runs our universe. It was what I makes me so be- beautiful, right? Yeah, but yeah. G- Jesus Christ, what, he was a protester. He wanted people yeah. to fill their hearts with love. He's is like, right. and and I think that we with with all these organized religions out there that we forget that that's what God wants us to do is to love each other, you know. And I think sometimes we we get confused over the definition of love. Love is a joining. Yes. And it has nothing to do with we uh, we we. So many people think that oh, what they put a, a romance to it uh, or a sexuality to it or something like that is like, and it's not about that. Love is about it's that energy that, that binds us all together. You know. Yes. Yeah. And when we you know, when we it, open our hearts up to that, it's like man. Yeah, it is. It it is about relationship, and hmm. you know, many of us throw relationships under the rug because of our own misunderstanding, unfortunately. But when we forgive and you know, let allow ourselves to say it's okay and I'm sorry, and forgive ourselves for those actions. Yeah, it can really change who we are. So, you know, relationship is hard, very hard. Uh, Next year, I've been with my wife 40 years. And, you know, those. Yes, it, it. thank you. It's hard work. And there's many times I'm surprised that we made it through some of these difficult times. but. Having the understanding that we're going to just take our problems with us, 
we have to address our problems before we can achieve any greatness. And even though we may not have our problems worked out, we are aware of our problems because those problems are never ending and they will isolate us. They'll condemn us. They'll torture us and they'll make us bleed. And we have to look at the inside of us, free ourselves. And that is the power of Jesus Christ. You know, yeah. the forgiveness. I, I My favorite thing about Christ is when he was on the cross and the words that he said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. It, it still just crushes me. You know, and knowing, yeah, I, I know that mindset, the hustle, the bustle, the every day I've got to succeed mindset instead of that humbled, hey, it is what it is. And I understand we have bad days. Humbling ourselves and recognizing the good in just being who we are. I'm okay just being who I am. I don't need to be, you know, the next biggest thing. I am the next biggest thing because I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I hope. And when I do, that's success. Yeah. And, you know, finding that and not caring about, you know, if I make a buck, I make a buck. If I don't, so be it. I wasn't supposed to make the buck. Yeah. As long as I'm clothed, I have food, I have warmth, and most of all, I have companionship. Because if we don't have companionship, whether it be a wife, a brother, a sister, a friend, whatever, that is who we are as a human being. We need each other. That's very important for people to understand. Yeah, that 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 that, and that's that's kind of the 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 whole point. I want people to to know that, and I support everybody to be able to at least voice their opinion. Sometimes they're they're the the opinions are are they're a little <laughs> out there, you know. Yeah, uh, and other times they they're they're right with what people need to hear at the time, you know? Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. You know, and, and as, as a host going out, interviewing people all the time, the one thing that I recognize is everybody's got a story mm. and they've got their why for that story. It's my job to just kind of shut up and, let them try to tell me the best way they can what their story is and why it matters so much. Even if I don't agree, it's what matters to them. And if you can't get that human connection through conversation without the judgment or the hostilities, yeah, you're in a box. And I say, get out of your box and energize yourself by learning new exciting things and meeting great people because a lot of people look and they see and they've already made their decision i don't want nothing to do with this guy and uh that's so unfortunate so many times you know yeah. that that first first appearance it, it can be shattering in so many ways how can we uh, kind of get away from that attitude for people? Well, that's that's the thing is, it, again, it, it leads back to being open, you know, um, you know, that 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 cliche saying you can't judge a book by its cover. Yes. True. Open the book up, you know, and ask a couple <laughs> questions. <laughs> yes. You no, know? that's but right. People, I, I actually enjoy asking people questions, you know, it's like, and, um, 
and I've had some some people say that it's like I can't can't interview everybody, but I can speak to a lot of people. And I've had people say, I I found myself telling you something that I never told any anybody else before. And it wasn't because I asked them. It was because I was open to what their story was. That's and, important. Hey, you know what, what, what we do, what we do it, it, uh, in, in our communities and especially our global communities as podcasters, it, it isn't everybody's, not everybody can do it, right? Not everybody can That's sit right. there and, op- and open every, and own open people up to their stories the way we do. Um, but when somebody comes to, comes to you and they're and they're and they're troubled at the time, just as an ordinary person, you can sit and listen to them. Just That's sit right. and listen. I mean, it's it's so important for for us as as human beings to know that somebody does listen. It is important. I mean, I don't know of anything more important as a human being is like to know that you're being listened to. You know, so yeah, it's empowering. Yeah, yeah. But that that personal empowerment is very important, and uh, when when we can help empower others just by simply listening, it's. Mm amazing and and, you know the the thing is i didn't recognize that and i'm still learning to be a good listener just uh because there's so many times we want to interrupt when we need to shut up you know and and let people just tell their story and that art of learning when to say excuse me uh that that really can take some time and when you learn to do that in a natural form that makes the story even more involving you know it 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 consumes you yeah And, and and that's precisely what people are looking for you stated earlier in our conversation about the media you know everybody's running from the media now and they are really looking for conversation like this that is truly open and you know bringing stories that matter and i i've actually found out that people will listen to portions some will listen to all but everybody will not listen to all of your podcast so We have to remember that when we're podcasters, we're not here for the numbers. Actually, we're here to put the story out. The numbers are, they will do themselves. So if you're worried about the numbers, stop it. You know, worry (laughs) about the story and allowing people to tell it. You know, most media outlets, they bring you on, you get what, five minutes out of a 15 minute segment. And you can't tell a story in that time. No, you know, you, you, you're like, well, what did I come here for? And this long format podcasting, this is what people are finding. And it it's exponentially growing every day, year to year, because people are finding this natural format and people are actually having conversations. Yeah. People, um, I had one, one person uh, say to me, um, he was amazed when, um, when he looked, when he looked at our system and he said, said, because we, we have something, some ridiculous amount of, of hours of, broadcast out there is it's it's something like uh 1400 1500 broadcast hours out there which you 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 divide it up into to 40 to 60 minute segments and it the numbers really start to be like oh 
and he, this guy um he's a um award winning uh, marketing agent and he's come up with some pretty interesting campaigns he even came up with a with a campaign to market god <laughs> for a church <laughs> like, okay and, he, yeah. and he, he's he, he's a fun guy uh out of new york right um and <laughs> he said so most of, most of these things they fizzle a, after after about eight episodes he says what's your secret and um, I think you found the same secret, Ed, is um, being fluid. You know, right. sit back, listen, be fluid, and people keep coming back, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's, that's the gift. You know, Michael, once you get that, you don't want to give it up. Even I, I don't care if people listen, you know, I, I'm here to do what I do and I enjoy what I do because I'm learning something uh, yeah. and that's exciting to me. And when we can do that and share that with people, <laughs> what more can you ask, you know? Yeah, so, exactly, right? Now, you've been on the radio you know, that's yeah. that's a totally different atmosphere and a vibe. So what's the difference that you found between the radio vibe and meeting people here on podcasting? Control. Control. I, this, this I control. Ah. Um, yes. Well, it was on radio. Um I was going to interview a guest. A guest had a, a a pretty radical view on on things, but again, hey, everybody has a voice and everybody should be given a chance to at least state their opinion at least once. And mm -hmm. that person had some um some concerns about how we're supporting rights for the LGBTQ community versus how we are supporting rights for the heterosexual community. And long and short of it is, is there were some legitimate concerns that um Instead of freeing everyone, are we promoting one thing and suppressing someone else? And that was what their concern was. But when I talked about having them come on my radio show, the station manager said it isn't going to happen. And the long and short of it was, is I got canceled on radio, but... At that point, I already had started Depictions Media as a production company. I and I said, "Well, I can't. I can't let them shut me up because people want to hear what what it is that I have to say." And they were already looking for me on uh, Apple uh, Podcast and. With with that, they were. I found out people are already googling my name or searching for my name on Apple Podcasts. So why not take advantage of that? And we we push forward. Um, it's not as expensive as people think it is to actually find a system that will help you link to all the different databases. With that. Um, I am on more podcast databases now with Depictions Media than I was with the radio station. I had more limitations. Yeah. So that conversation was a freeing conversation. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that distribution is much broader. That's for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, because oh, yeah. uh, yeah. I know Dead America. You, you're on Apple Podcasts. I, I when I went to, I searched the, the big ones, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify, and yeah, I type yeah. in Dead America. Hey, there he is, <laughs> my yeah. friend Ed. Yeah, pop right up. We're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We, we want to be everywhere because it's not about my story. You know, it's about everybody's story, and right. I, I don't care. Uh, who who it is i want to talk to them and i've i've had the gamut you know we 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 don't discriminate because when our world is discriminatory there's not room to grow and that's what our world is lacking today is that yeah. growth cycle of diversity and the thoughts that hold us back are our own so let's dive into other people's thoughts, know our world a little bit better. And yeah, I want to be everywhere. Like you stated, that control, it, you control that RSS feed where you yeah. put it. That's yours, you know, and, and then there's always that legal aspect. If I need to write a letter and even have the attorney to send it to, you know, take that back you know there's those control mechanisms that you can use but you definitely own your media and that's so right. important uh, a lot of people laugh at me because <laughs> look at you you think you're a media company no i know i'm a media company why because i care about other people's stories and they right. will go out if it takes me three years produce it get it out uh, and that's where people lack ambition and yeah. that's where you find strength is through your own ambitions so i i don't allow people to dish on me you know i, I just great i i love that input you know yeah. it's critical that i know who and what you are so i want to know what people are saying yeah, that's how you know who the person is. So yeah, exactly. give them the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will say this, and and it was one of the most exciting moments in in my whole podcast career. Um, if we can, if if we can boil it down to just simply a career, um, is I was on a bus. And I heard people talking about not knowing that I was that I was standing there listening to them on the bus talking about my podcast. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. It was like it, that's better than, than than any statistic that uh that that I could find on either through our marketing systems and, and all that kind of stuff. It's like that was that was it. It's like they were talking yeah. about one of them disagreed with me, somebody else agreed, somebody else was on the fence, but the conversation was about the topic matter that we had put out on that podcast. Yeah. I was like, that's it's, amazing. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I found <laughs> you never know who's listening. You know, and and the beauty of it, they they keep coming back if they like it. So don't don't let your own mind tell you that they don't like it because you're afraid of your own voice. A lot of people they get stuck on that. I sound funny. I, I'm not getting on the microphone. Currently, I'm going through the Napod Pomo. It's Every November, podcasters, they come together, napodpomo.org, and they do 30 podcasts in 30 days. It doesn't matter if you do 30 in one day and release them all. As long as you do 30 podcasts in November, you've completed the challenge. And it's like a boot camp for me every year now. I, I just play with it, you know, because... It keeps me sharp. It keeps me yeah. going, looking for new people, new things. And 
It's a great thing to challenge who you are, what you think you know, because I found out I don't know as much as I think I know all the time. And mm-hmm. I've I've been I've been humbled many times and I'm glad when I get humbled, when we find that spice and that need to help and knowing that we're not all that. We're just here. Yeah. And I, I think you touched on it earlier. We're all kind of part of this big picture. And it takes yeah. all of us to make it really spin. That's yeah, it that's does. the world. So our world, what have you been doing for this year that has been exciting or not so exciting? What growth have you seen for yourself? And what do you see for the coming new year? Well, for, for the coming new year, um, we do have a, a couple of uh, new projects on, on the run. Um, I found my I found myself I, I, I immersed into a writing community um, on Twitter, and um, so with that, I'm I'm looking to help serve them because some of them are are um, they're book writers, and we we've come up with a new couple new show concepts um one uh did you will probably be looking forward to to have actually have launch in the new year is authored by the book um and it involves we 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 have a i have a copywriter <laughs> on our team there's uh well i i will say this much i am a solopreneur um but you got to have team members, you know? Um, right. and she's also a solopreneur. Um, and that she does this copywriting. It's just her basically, but we work together and we're, we're going to come up with a podcast called author by the book where she's going to, cause she loves books. So she's going to interview people. And I, I think awesome. that's going to be an amazing thing. Um, and there's going to be a few other um, things that, that we're going to be doing that I'm still going to have my podcast, but we're going to have others come on depictions under the depictions media label that will um, they, they're going to be talking, talking and not me so much. So, um, so a lot of growth. That That's way. nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's growth. You know, and, yeah. you know, I, I really think we we need to think about growing in in anything that we do. I, I hope we can get back together and do some more projects together in the future because. Oh, yeah. Speaking with you is that. always good. <laughs> and so, yeah. Do you have any words of wisdom or calls to act? for our listeners today michael well um i'm gonna i'm gonna ask this out of everybody listening if you haven't found it yet look for that that subscribe button (laughs) click on it that's right and um also when you when you go to depictions.media it's um, it, it, there, that was another amazing story with uh, with with WordPress when I got ready to build our own website that they had depictions dot media available. Uh, Get any better than that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you only had to remember <laughs> depictions media. OK, so Google search uh, depictions media and you will find all about us uh, every episode. Um, that we have out there on three different uh, podcasts. We have the influencer club. Um, We have policy and rights, which Ed, you appeared on policy and rights. Um, Good episode. Yeah. And we also have um, the Sunday offering where, Hey, I, I, I put my reverend hat on and, and I, and I tell people how Jesus Christ just wants us to love each other. And we need to open up our hearts to that one love. 
that God put there for us. Um, so you'll find all that. And, and if you go to it, go to Apple Podcasts, you go to Spotify, Google Play, um, help. We even a- appear in some database um, and um, Lithuania that <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> I got an email from from somebody from from Lithuania because we appear as one of the one of the best podcasts to listen to um, in English, not in because I, I don't translate um, in English. Uh, one of the best podcasts to, to actually listen to in that in in Eastern New Europe. I was like, OK. <laughs> Wow! Right on. <laughs> Didn't you even never know would... where you are. Right, you know. So, um, so yeah. Find that subscribe button. Click on it. Um, go to depictions media and get more information about who we are and w- and what human rights actually means. And um, Ed, thanks for having me. It's been awesome. You know, Michael, it's been an actual pleasure sitting here discussing these things with you and what we're doing is booming and those people that are sitting on the sideline just doing nothing but complaining that's not where it's at you got to get in the game even though you think you don't matter you matter your voice matters you've got to tell it and if if you can't tell it, reach out to somebody like Michael or myself so we can help you get your story out to the world where it needs to be. I think it's very critical. And I want to say thank you so much for doing what you do. You're very active, always producing good content. And most of all, thank you for being part of the Dead America family here today. Yeah, well, um, depictions media and Dead America, we're we're family now. <laughs> so we're going places, people, and uh, listen to both of us. It's great content, and yes, take the time to go through the catalog, observe some of the content, and actually open yourself up to something new. And most of all. Stand strong in what you believe in because that matters most. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.